Hola, ¿qué tal? Otra vez con los vídeos sobre las expresiones idiomáticas en español. Bueno, ok. So we've moved on to the G's now. Would you believe we're in the G's? Um, now, I want to. G, H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We just did H and now I'm back to G. Not very good. Um, but we're back to G. And the word is giri. Giri. Okay, now, have you heard this word before? It's spelled G U I R I. Giri. And what a giri is, is a foreigner who goes to Spain. Okay, um, this is how you can spot a giri. Typically, this is somebody who drinks too much. This is somebody who sometimes wears sandals with socks. Okay, uh, somebody who burns themselves when they go on holiday and a general um, a foreigner, okay? Uh, if the British people go, you know, tish, uh, handkerchief on your head with four knots just for the heat, that's a giri, okay? Sometimes it can be used as a very negative pejorative word to describe horrible foreigners. And sometimes it can be used quite as a uh, just as, as a way of describing somebody who's not from Spain, who's who's coming you know, like a tourist. Un giri, all right? Um, but it did come about because of the massive tourism that we, uh, went to Spain. People who would go to Spain and get really drunk, all right? And burn. So we only have ourselves to blame for the name giri, okay? So if you hear somebody saying, ay, no te preocupes, es un giri, they might be talking about you, all right? <laughs> okay, this is a great expression. Back to the H's now. And this expression is um, is a, one of the famous Spanish expressions where they only say part of the sentence. Now, this is very common in Spanish. I think also in English, when I'm starting to teach English, I'm noticing that we do that as well. But the Spanish are very good at it. Spanish speakers, I should say. And... Um, what they do is this, they say this expression, haberme lo dicho. The verb haber, that's the one that starts with the H, okay? Haberme lo, one word, with an accent over the A, haberme lo dicho, okay? Now what that really means is, you should have told me, okay? You should have told me. Now the actual sentence is this, Deberías haberme lo dicho. Deberías haberme lo dicho. That's what, that's what the full sentence is. Deberías, you should, have haberme lo, have, so it's really, it's you should have me it said. Okay? But they don't, but it's too long. It's too long. So they cut it down and they say, haberme lo dicho. Okay? And that really just means you should have told me. So, somebody, um, you know, you say, Oh, eh, por cierto, tengo que, yo tengo que salir a las dos hoy. And your boss, yeah, I have to go out at two today. And the boss should have said, uh, says, A ver, me lo dicho ayer. You should have told me yesterday. A ver, me lo dicho ayer. Es que tenemos mucho trabajo hoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, you should have told me yesterday. We've got lots, of, lots to do today. Okay, so it's just, you should have told me. And you don't even have to say any more than that. You can just literally say, you know, if somebody says, uh, oh, sabes, el otro día me sentía fatal sobre esa situación. You know, the other day I felt really bad about that, that situation. Somebody says, a ver, me lo dicho. Te habría ayudado. You should have told me, I would have helped you. Yeah? So, haberme lo dicho. Interesting one, eh? Okay. Next. Hablar por los codos. Hablar por los codos. What on earth does that mean? Hablar, to speak, por, through, los codos. Through your elbows. Speaking through your elbows. What does it mean? Well, it means talkative. Somebody who doesn't shut up. We say, uh, they talk so much they could talk underwater, right? Well, the Spanish 
uh, certainly in Spain, and I, I'm not sure in other, other countries as well, they say, joder, esa persona habla por los codos. Habla por los codos. He talks, she talks, through the elbows. It just means without stopping, incessantly. Mm -hmm. There is another expression, which is eh, una persona habladora. Okay? Esa mujer, ¿qué habladora es? She's really talkative. The same, joder, esa mujer habla por los codos. Mm -hmm. So it just means to talk a lot, to talk through the elbows. Okay? Don't, I don't know where, where it comes from. I beg your pardon. Okay. Now, next one. Hacer falta. Hacer falta. Okay, now this is a really interesting one. This is probably, this is not the forum to, to, to expand on that. And I think Cynthia and I will be expanding on this, this, um, th these two verbs. Okay. But hacer falta is really, it's the same as uh, necesitar, to need. Hacer falta means to need something. It's fal faltar is to lack, to be lacking. Okay, so when you what you're saying is it makes lack, it makes lack, um, which is need. So how you would use that hacer falta is um, you could say now the, what happens is falta never changes in this sentence when you use it with hacer. What happens is hacer changes from singular, some one thing is needed, to plural, more than one thing is needed, right? So it becomes hace falta or hacen falta, but the falta doesn't change, okay? That's just lack. So it makes lack one thing, it makes lack more than one thing. Hace falta, hacen falta. So how would you use that? Um, you could say, uh, sabes, aquí hacen falta eh, más herramientas. Okay, hacen falta más herramientas. Here, there is a need, and it isn't so much we need, it's there is a need um, for more tools. Okay? Uh, See, hace falta, uh, for example, somebody goes to, wants to go to the shop, and they say, yo voy a la tienda, hace falta algo? Is something in lack? You say, si, hace falta leche. Um, Hacen falta más, eh, más tazas. More cups are in need. There's a lack of cups. Hacen falta tazas. Cups are in need, yeah? So, hacen falta, that's plural, tazas. Or, hace falta leche. M milk is needed. This, it, there's no difference between hace falta leche or, si, sí, eh, necesitamos leche. We need, we need milk. There's no difference. It's just, it's, it's actually easier to say, and that's probably why, remember that Spanish speakers always go for the easiness. So that's probably why they say, hace falta. See how quickly you can say it? Si, hace falta leche. Rather than, si, necesitamos leche. Okay? So, hace falta, hacen falta. But I recommend that you look into these two verbs because faltar can be used on its own. It doesn't need to be with hacer falta. If you use faltar on its own, it means there's a lack of. So falta, si falta, falta gente. People are people are missing. Faltan dos personas. Two people are missing. Okay. So it's it's something that we can go into in greater depth in another video. But this is kind of just an expression that's very handy to use. Que hace falta? Que hace falta? Pues no hace falta nada. What's missing? Nothing's missing. No hace falta nada. Tenemos todo. We have everything, nothing's missing. Okay, nothing's in lack. Bien. Okay. Next one. Hacer transbordo. Okay, hacer transbordo. What does that mean? Transbordo. By the way, the words that I put in this uh, and, and we talk about are in the description just below if you want to just check. All right. Hacer Transbordo means to change trains. Okay, uh, we would say um, we have a connection. We would say in, in the UK, I don't know what they would say in the US or in Australia uh, or in any other English speaking country, but we typically say, oh, I've got a connection in King's Cross. All right, um, the Spanish a Spanish speaker would say, si, uh, tengo que hacer transbordo 
and King's Cross. Okay, so um, you buy a ticket, por favor, un, um, un billete para Madrid. And the person might say, ah, sí, uh, usted tiene que hacer transbordo en Sevilla. You have to change trains in Sevilla, in Seville. Okay, so it just means to change trains, and it's for trains, okay? Not for planes, that's something else. Now, L. Uh, last one for this uh, video. L is leches. Now, Cynthia and I have done a series of videos on swear words in Spanish, okay, in, uh, in Spain. And leche is a word that figures quite a lot in all of the kind of the colloquialisms and the swear words. In its plural form, it's completely acceptable to shout leches, leches. And it means like, for God's sake, that kind of thing, like goodness gracious, yeah? Um, so you can just shout it if you get like a shock. Leches, leches is goodness gracious, all right? Leches. But also you can put it into a sentence as well. Um, and, and it shows, it's an intensifier and it shows kind of like a like an exasperation or a frustration or, or a confusion or something. Um, yeah, for example, I could say, Sabes, me estás hablando, pero no sé de qué leches me estás diciendo. O, o qué leches me estás contando. See, you're talking to me, but I don't know what in God's name you were saying to me. Or what the hell you're saying to me. Que leches me estás contando. Okay? Um, so, no sé de que leches me está diciendo ese hombre. I don't know what the hell this guy's saying to me. All right? So you'll hear this word leches, um, and later on you'll see when we talk about narices, noses, so milks and noses. All right? These are words that, that are used on a daily basis, certainly in Spain, to kind of show a bit of exasperation. It's just like, oh, what the hell? Yeah? So, what the hell? Que leches. What the hell? Hmm? Okay? All right, so there you are. That's We're at uh, L now. We're still going to continue with L. Uh, entonces, nos vemos en el, el próximo video. Pues hasta pronto. Adios.